Hey guys, Tim here with episode two of the Chicago Northwestern Harvard subdivision in N scale. And this is an exciting episode to share because we are moved in and construction has begun. So we are now in the new house uh, and I can show you what the space uh, looks like so that way you can kind of get a sense of, you know, what, uh, what, what I'm working with. I showed you the plans um, in any rail last time, but this way you can see the physical space. So this whole area that you're seeing right here uh, of the basement is the area that I'll be building the layout. So basically where the nook starts back to the, to the far wall and the door, uh, that's, all, that's all layout space. So we've got this, um, this nook area that's about six feet deep as well. So that's, that's more space to work with. And then um, there's this door back here that I'll, that I'll go through in just a sec. Uh, so you can see, but you go back through uh, and then you can see on the other side of the wall, this is where the staging will go and where you see the, the black shelving, um, that's where the helix will eventually be. So this is what it looked like when we first moved in. They had left a couple storage units there for us. Um, and before I could go ahead and start working and getting ready, um, I had to obviously go pick up the, uh, you know, the old layout. We got, had to get everything out of storage. So for one last time, you get a chance to look at the old layout after I picked it up. Uh, and mainly the main thing was, you know, getting the buildings off. There wasn't anything else from the old layout that I really needed or wanted to keep. Because uh, again, it was primarily for practice. Uh, but you can see uh, I was able to slowly and carefully uh, work under where I had glued things down. It was especially tricky on the factory just because uh, ballast and other seating really helped form an even stronger bond. Um, but you can see uh, that minus a, a couple of panels just popping off at the joints, which is really easy to fix. The buildings are all in great shape, which is good because I definitely want to use those again in the future. So uh, the good news to share with you is that I was wrong on my measurements and had and modified the plans slightly because of that. And, and it, the reason it's good news is because I actually had short measured several of the walls. So for example, I uh, had written down for some reason that the, the nook area was about four feet deep. In reality, it's six feet deep. Uh, and that two feet obviously changed things quite a bit. So I wanted to walk you through kind of the revised plans. And you'll see that I color coded areas of the layout because I wanted to break down how I wanted to construct the first level, because I'll do the first level first, uh, in phases. So I'm going to start, as you're going to see here, by building the lower level staging yard because it's in the back room. Don't need to worry about scenery. Don't really need to worry about uh, bench work for reasons that you'll see. I'll just do simple shelf brackets, right? But it's a chance to get started. And that way I can get initial wiring and storage down, storage tracks down for trains. So starting in the back room, we've, we've got the staging, which this is pretty much the same. Uh, it'll be 10 tracks of staging. And this is kind of phase one. It'll all feed in to uh, this double crossover here um, because one of the big changes again that I'm making is I'm, I'm switching over to Pico uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, I just think that it's it's a more more reliable product to work with, um, especially with the Unifrog turnouts. And, and I'll discuss that more when I show you actual construction, but the staging all converges here on this crossover. Uh, and then after that, uh, this is where there'll be a, another turnout just to turn it into the triple track main lane that I mentioned. And that'll be the end of phase one is where that turnout is. So my goal is to build this all first and to kind of get everything ready there. Phase two will be to build out um, a little bit more in the back room, uh, including the space for the tracks that will eventually feed into the helix but also to get the initial bench work and construction done for the first area of the finished layout. This the reason I'm the another reason I'm delaying this is because we're uh, we're going to paint the basement. Um, we really don't we're not fans of the dark color, and so I don't want to start doing anything in the finished area until we have the walls painted. Obviously, um, but we'll cut a hole uh, in the drywall. Um, I measured out where the studs are. It's what this uh, two and a half inch measurement is um, to make sure that I'm not running into that. Uh, and we'll do the initial curve to get on to the layout. Uh, it's 14. It's a 14 inch radius uh, is the is the uh, for the close for the closest uh, corner here. So uh, not too tight. I mean, I the rest of the turns will all be definitely larger radius because it just looks better. But for the space that I've got to work with, it'll certainly do in a pinch. So got this turn here and this will be where phase two ends. And how it's working is uh, go, as you go counterclockwise, 
um, you're heading you're heading north or west. It's kind of at an angle. You're heading northwest uh, because obviously phase one, the staging yard, that represents uh, Chicago proviso, right, going that way. Um, but I'm able to to geographically move back a little bit farther southeast. So when I showed you this plan last time, I was going to do kind of a generic industry lumber industry. Uh, I'm starting farther east on the line, so I can actually model a real uh, facility, which is Heller Lumber. So, so that'll be the first piece that you see coming out of the staging yard. Um, although it'll be serviced by trains that are going eastbound because I, I want them to operate as a trailing point. So phase three is to get the bench work all the way uh, to here. Um, where you see this pink. This is going to be, the pink is where the swing gate's going to be, so I want to get everything done here. I've got a friend of mine with a construction and carpentry background that's going to help me with the swing gate, um, but it's, that's just going to be a straight line of track. Then the next phase will be to uh, build over here, which is where the Arlington Heights station will be, um, and it'll curve around into this short nook right here. Uh, this is where Molon Mortar and Coil will be, which again is a real industry on the line, along with the siding um, that's over on this side. And then we'll curve in the pink here is an, is the other swing gate to get into the space. Um, and then after that, we move into the next phase. I'm adding another metro station here, Arlington Park. Uh, and the reason I'm doing that is because, I mean, I have the space for it, but also uh, it'll have the potential for some interesting commuter operations in the future because potentially, because if you follow any news in Chicago right now, it's looking like the Chicago Bears might move there to a new stadium out there, which would be really interesting. Um, there's a couple sightings for maintenance of way equipment over here. And this is, again, this is phase five uh, in the orange. And then the next piece that I'll work on is uh, on the far wall in the nook, uh, which will be um, the next stage leading into what will kind of be almost a little pseudo peninsula. This is where the hyper microsystems is, which is where the tank cars will go uh, along with the siding. And then it curves back around again going further northwest and this is where on this angle here is where palatine station will be um, which will be the last major stop uh, on the route before we transition back uh, into the back room and you'll see to get ready for the helix the interior uh, track you can switch out and then the final phase then will be to build the helix on the ground floor. Uh, and then once the helix will get built, then obviously I'll start constructing the second level. Uh, the second level, I've, I've finalized what that's gonna look like. Um, I haven't broken down the phases yet because that's a long ways off. Um, but one interesting thing I'm gonna do, so we'll start here with the, with the helix. And, but to, I wanna keep, I want the trains moving in the same direction on both levels. Um, so I'm actually gonna have this start off uh, at, a, at a slightly higher height, uh, about not much, two, three inches, just enough to do like a bridge. And it'll bridge over. Uh, and, and so that way, even though you're coming out of the helix, uh, you're, you're gonna curve back down this way again to keep the, the direction of traffic correct. So this is gonna take you into uh, Crystal Lake. Uh, and before the swing gate, you're gonna have uh, it's not going to be a functional representation, but it's where uh, the northwest. It's where this line re intersects with the McHenry line. So I'll model kind of pretend uh, s switches that'll that'll uh, connect off to that line, um, but it'll just be for show. There's the swing gate again, uh, which will take you right into Crystal Lake Station, uh, and then after moving down here, this is where the Crystal Lake Metro staging will be. Um, and then uh, it will finish in the swing gate. I don't think that'll be a problem at all. And then it continues on. Uh, there's a crossover track here, just like there is on the actual uh, on the actual line. Uh, and then after uh, a good stretch of just straight running, which I really want just for um, you know scenic uh, opportunities, uh, then it'll move into uh, more industries that are on the line. So Elite Door again is an actual industry on the line. Uh, and then we're into Ridgefield. Uh, and so RP Lumber uh, and then Ridgefield Grain, which I mentioned last time, and then it'll swing out and then this will just be open open running on the way to Harvard. Uh, so this will be the open running. Well, actually, there's a couple towns before Harvard, but as far as what staging represents on the way to Harvard, again, this is slightly off uh, in terms of elevation, so that way it can pass under. 
and then it'll take you to the upper level staging, which again is structured the exact same as the ground floor staging. So that's the general that's the general plan, and I'm really excited about that plan. Uh, I think it's going to be I think it's going to be really great. So that being said, I went I've been able to go ahead and get started on phase one of the of the first level. So I had to obviously empty out the back room. Uh, get it ready to go. Uh, not only get that furniture out there, it, they had uh, hanger brackets, uh, hanger brackets on the wall. So I had to get those those off. Um, and I did go ahead and I actually positioned these for a height of 49 inches, even though it's going to be 48 inches on the line because I'm not going to lay the one inch of foam. Um, so I want it to be a comparable level. I did go ahead and lay out cork sheets uh, in part to help keep it level. Uh, and in part also just, you know, for sound reasons as well. Um, and so, like I mentioned, I, I am uh, switching to Pico um, because I've just, I really feel that it's gonna provide me with some more consistent operation. Um, I had some issues with the Atlas switches that I wasn't a fan of. Um, and honestly, the microengineering flex track was good, but supply is really an issue. Um, and I, I just wanted to go with something that I could reliably order as I needed it. Didn't want to have to, you know, worry about it. So uh, I went ahead and ordered, although it's interesting because I say that and then it was, I had to order from a couple different stores to get enough of the Unifrog uh, switches uh, in order to, to build this lower level staging. But I, I was able to get it pretty fast. Um, my goal for this time was to build up to the, the double crossover because that's going to be a little bit trickier to wire properly. So I wanted to skip that part for now um, and, and try and, you know, just take the time, make sure I, I get that done, get that done right. So I was able to get, um, my goal was to get half of the lower level staging yard done um, because I, I wanted to get the whole ladder of switches in. I wanted to drill the holes to uh, get the frog, the wire for the frog down. Um, it's not crucial. The The benefit of the, of the Unifrog is that there, it's got pretty consistent power distribution. Um, the frog is unpowered, but it's a pretty, it, it's a, it's a much smaller area that's unpowered compared to the Atlas, which is I was working with. Um, but I was able to go through, um, I was able to go through and kind of map out, you know, roughly where everything was going to go, make sure I had everything that I needed. Um, and I wanted to start off by laying, uh, one of the two main tracks that will eventually turn into one of the mainline tracks running on the layout. Um, so I measured it out, make sure I got it straight. And then I did have to cut some small two inch segments of flex track because, and this is always, you know, a, a reason why you got to confirm in real life what your track plan is going to look like in, in any rail. It looks like you can just straight ladder those turnouts with no breaks and it's, and it'll be just fine. The reality though, is because of the pieces on the side where the switch is, uh, you can't, I, I, there's no way you can trim it down. It's just, it's just not going to work. But if you add in, you know, just a couple inches of, of straight track, then you have plenty of clearance and it's, and it's no big deal. Um, and so that was just something quick that again, on the, in the software, it looks like it's totally fine and good to go. Um, but otherwise, you know, no problem, no problems whatsoever. Once I added those, those small flex track segments in. So I went and glued down um, that first line, I used some push pins just to kind of hold it in place. And then obviously I weighted it down afterwards to make sure that it, you know, glued, glued closely while that was, while that was going, um, I worked on getting the ladder all set up, uh, making sure that that was all connected. I wanted to get it all connected because I wanted to make sure, you know, looking under it, um, I wanted to make sure. I wanted to make sure that, uh, there wouldn't be any awkward points where I'm dropping feeders with the shelving brackets that I had shelving brackets that I had put in. So once I knew that and got everything good to go and looking well, um, I started plotting, getting the rest of it down. Uh, once the first piece of track was glued, I just did a quick finger test with one of the freight cars to make sure everything was rolling smoothly. Um, and obviously it was, which was super exciting. Uh, and then uh, I will, I don't have these in yet, but I will later. I am using the Caboose Industries ground throws. I'll show you in the next video. Um, and this was my kind of attempt to show you without it ever, without anything being mounted, um, that it does. I did have to pull the springs out of the Pico switches for this to work, uh, cause that spring is just, it's too much for the, for the 
uh, ground throw to actually work. So I pulled the springs off, but these ground, these Caboose Industries ground throws have metal connections. You got to drill a hole, obviously, but it allows you to manually uh, adjust the power in the frog without having to use a tortoise switch machine. I didn't want to deal with switch machines in the staging area. Uh, I'll use I'll use switch machines for the main line on the scenic part of the layout, um, but. That aside, I got everything down. Uh, I drilled the holes for the wires for the for the frogs to power them later, uh, and that meant uh, it was time. Uh, I'm still waiting for my terminals and other electrical components I need to, to wire this whole area properly, um, but I did solder the first uh, feeders on, which meant it was time to do the ceremonial first run. I figured the consist for the 400 would be the right one to do the, the first run. Not a lot of track room yet, obviously, but it is a momentous occasion. We have trains running on the layout. And I've, I was testing a bunch of other locomotives to make sure everything worked great, and it did after this. But this was the official first run up and down one of the staging tracks, which is great. Um, I'm super excited we're at this point already. So the next steps for the next episode uh, that I really want to make sure uh, that I really want to make sure that I'm working on is get those ground throws installed and wired, um, install the other half of the staging yard, uh, figure out how to wire the crossover. Cause once I do that, that'll allow me to officially check phase one off and start prepping for phase two. So look for that in the next video. The next video will have phase one done. Maybe depending on how far I get, maybe you'll see some initial construction of the bench work for phase two. Cause at that point I'm not just gonna be able to use shelf brackets. I'll actually have to build um, I'm just going to do open grid bench work, but I'll build that stuff. Um, so thank you everybody that's liked and commented and followed. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe. Um, but we'll continue to have more progress very soon.